Uh, my name is Eric J. Moore. Uh, I'm the Associate Professor of Otolaryngology, uh, Head and Neck Surgery here at the Mayo Clinic. My co-authors and I uh, wrote a study of the long-term functional and oncologic outcomes of transoral robotic surgery for oropharyngeal squamous cell carcinoma. It will appear in an upcoming issue of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings in 2012. We looked at uh, th both the long-term functional and the uh, oncologic outcomes of patients with squamous cell carcinoma that were treated with transoral robotic surgery. Many patients with uh, oropharyngeal squamous cell carcinoma have traditionally been treated with open surgical procedures, and we've noted for a long time that those procedures often produce some devastating uh, functional uh, sequelae in those patients and uh, the patients had to go through a lot to achieve cure with those procedures. Because of that, there was a transition in care uh, in this country uh, to chemotherapy and radiation therapy without surgical therapy for many patients with tonsil and tongue-based cancer. And we learned from that experience that we could uh, achieve reasonable cure rates, but that the patients would sometimes develop long-term problems with speech and particularly with swallowing. Because of that, we went back to uh, look at a surgical treatment uh, that was less invasive, and for us that surgical treatment evolved into transoral robotic surgery. We had been performing this procedure uh, for several years for patients with oropharyngeal squamous cell carcinoma, and the purpose of our study was to look at their long-term oncologic results to see if we could achieve the same cure rates, but also their functional results to see if we could preserve some speech and swallowing. What we found that, uh, was that uh, in uh, 66 patients that we followed for greater than two years, our uh, local control and disease-specific survival uh, with that treatment approached greater than 90 percent, but that we were uh, noticing a significant improvement in speech and swallowing results in these patients, with 96 percent of the patients being able to return to an oral diet within three weeks of their treatment, which was quite a bit better than what we'd achieved in the past with open surgical procedures and was better than what we were seeing long-term with chemotherapy and radiation therapy. We're very enthusiastic about this uh, therapy for patients who have oropharyngeal squamous cell carcinoma. We're seeing an overall change in this disease where it's affecting younger and healthier patients, predominantly uh, because of exposure to human papillomavirus and that virus playing a role in the uh, development of their cancer. And we've known for a long time that, that women could develop cervical cancer from human papillomavirus. And there's some unique similarities to the tonsil and base of tongue surface that uh, allows the papillomavirus to set up camp there and cause a chronic infection and eventually produce cancer just like it can in the cervix. And so we've been seeing a rising incidence of this tumor throughout the population. Um, it's a highly treatable tumor. Uh, the, the survival rates are much better than typical non-papillomavirus uh, tonsil cancer that we used to only see in heavy, heavy smokers and drinkers. Um, and so we've taken that information and that knowledge and tried to cone down the treatment to give people a treatment that they can live with afterwards without a lot of the devastating consequences that we used to see in our heavy-handed treatment. Uh, we're enthusiastic about offering patients uh, in this young age group a minimally invasive surgical therapy that could hopefully preserve long-term their speech and their swallowing and improve their quality of life, but just still, still achieve a very high cure rate. And we think that transoral robotic surgery is going to play a major role in the treatment of these patients in the upcoming decade. Even though our study is a single institutional study, um, we think this lends a lot of evidence toward the development of a multi-institutional prospective study comparing transoral robotic surgery with non-operative means such as chemotherapy and radiation therapy, and hopefully eventually coning down and individualizing the treatment of tonsil cancer and base of tongue cancer to the patient to achieve a high cure rate and preserve the maximal quality of life. So, Patients who have tonsil and tongue-based cancer now have several treatment options that they could pursue. Um, our findings in patients with human papillomavirus cancer is that those patients can expect a very high cure rate in the majority of cases, but now they have several options uh, that we can individualize to their in, uh, stage of tumor, to their individual lifestyle, uh, to other factors that are unique to that patient. More options means hopefully a more individualized treatment 
uh, again, that can achieve a high cure rate, but specifically we're looking to improve the quality of life of these patients, realizing that they have many, many years to live after their treatment uh, and once they're cured of cancer and hopefully minimizing the impact of our treatment on their life. The logical next step is to see if these results can be translated to a real world environment over multiple institutions and multiple providers and multiple patients. And I think the gold standard uh, to prove this would be a randomized prospective controlled trial incorporating transoral robotic surgery and comparing it to other standard treatments such as open surgery with adjuvant therapy or non-operative therapy with chemoradiation therapy and to look at what the long-term results are in such a study on both the oncologic cure rates of the tumor and also the functional results in the patient. The takeaway message uh, for both patients and providers is that young, healthy patients can develop tonsil and tongue-based cancer. The findings can be rather subtle and that uh, when those patients are diagnosed with this cancer that they should uh, be referred to a multidisciplinary institution, institution such as the Mayo Clinic so they can be offered all the potential treatments for this tumor and hopefully individualize the treatment to maximize their cure and their quality of life. We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Twitter. For more information on healthcare at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.